Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's lesson, we'll be checking out a new topic called electronegativity. We're going to define what electronegativity is, and then look for the periodic trends for electronegativity. So we're going to be looking for the group trends up and down the periodic table, and also our period trends left and right as we go across the periodic table. So we're going to define electronegativity, and then discuss the trends for it. A good definition for electronegativity is how strongly an atom is going to attract or pull electrons to itself in a chemical bond. Now a chemical bond is either going to be an ionic bond or a covalent bond. And so electronegativity is simply going to be how strongly or the strength of an atom's pull of a shared pair of electrons. So if I look at the picture here and I see there are some electrons in question. Now these electrons can either be shared evenly, shared unevenly, or actually taken. That is the result of the atoms pulling strength. Right? The atoms pulling strength. The more electronegative element will pull the electrons towards itself. So the electrons will not be in the middle, they will drift towards the more electronegative element. I want you to check out this picture here. I'm trying to show you atoms that have equal size. All right, they're the same size electron clouds. Whether it's big or small, it really doesn't matter. As long as they have equal size atoms, what you're going to have is an equal share of electrons. The electrons that are being shared in this case are these guys right here. Those electrons being shared. And that is going to have an equal electronegativity value, meaning the pulling power these electrons are being pulled towards the nucleus over here. These electrons are being pulled towards the nucleus as well. Just recall something here. My nucleus has a, a positive charge. So each nucleus has a positive charge. Each of my electrons have a negative charge. So there is a natural attraction for the electrons to drift towards the protons. A natural reaction for the electrons to drift to the left towards those protons too. But as long as I have equal size atoms, they're going to have an equal share over those electrons because they have equal electronegativity. And once again, that is an equal pulling power on my electrons that are in question. Whenever I have a difference in the size of an atom, okay, and I use this word up here, unequal, whenever I have an unequal or a different size atom, I'm going to have an unequal sharing of electrons because there is an unequal electronegativity or an unequal strength between the two elements. One of the key things here to realize is that my protons in the center here of my small atom are relatively close to these electrons, while the protons over here are relatively farther away. So which nucleus will my negative electrons be kind of attracted to? They're going to be a little bit more attracted. <laughs> They're going to be a little more attracted to the smaller atom because the protons in the nucleus are a little bit closer. And what you're going to see now is that these electrons are actually going to move a little bit. They're going to move a little bit closer to the smaller atom, like that, kind of into its electron cloud. Once again, that is because I do have an attraction between my protons and my electrons, and the attraction is stronger because it is closer to... Electronegativity is how strongly an atom is going to attract or pull electrons to itself in a bond. It is the atom's strength. That's what electronegativity is. There is a tug of war going on over our electrons and the smaller atom is going to be stronger and win the tug of war and pull electrons closer to itself. Now I'm using the tug of war analogy, but I do want you to know the smaller atom is always a stronger atom. It has a stronger pull on the electrons in question. And as long as I have equal size, that means the tug of war, there is a tug. These guys are being pulled this way, these guys are trying to be pulled this way, I'm going to have an equal pull on those electrons. The smaller atom is more electronegative and stronger. And to sum up the notes portion of this, I'm going to give you this. In a bond, 
the smaller atom, all right, the smaller atom will pull the shared electrons closer to itself. There is a tug of war going on. The smaller atoms in the past here, I have called Yoda because I love Star Wars. And they're going to pull it away from the larger atoms. The larger atoms I have represented by Big Bird being kind of something that's big and weak. So sodium is a larger atom than fluorine, so therefore fluorine is more electronegative and will pull the electrons closer to itself. Now we're getting on to our second portion of the lesson. What are the trends? The trends are going to be that as I go up a group, my electronegativity value increases. So beryllium, element number four, is more electronegative than barium, element number 56. And likewise, as I go up this group right here, the most electronegative element will be scandium because it is the smaller element. That is my group trend. So the group trend is going to be increasing electronegativity going up a group. And how about going across a period from, right, from left to right? As I go across this period, and I continue on on the other side where boron is, my electronegativity value will increase. It's going to increase as I approach the smaller atoms. So oxygen is more electronegative than boron. Sulfur is more electronegative than silicon. So my electronegativity values increase as I go from left to right across a periodic table and across a period. That is my group trend going up and down and my period trend going left and right. Okay, guys, quick uh, review here. I have a shared pair of electrons here electrons that are in between oxygen, there's a tug of war going on over these electrons. Both oxygens want to pull those electrons closer to itself. Which atom will the electrons move towards? The atom on the left, the atom on the right, or will they stay directly in the middle? Please take a second and try to figure this one out. Okay, here we go. In this case, I have two identical atoms. They're both oxygen, so therefore they have both have the same electronegativity value, and therefore the tug of war over the electrons will be even. So my electrons will stay in the middle. They will stay put. They're going to stay in the middle. In the next question, I'm going to look at H2O. And the electrons that are in question right now are the electrons that are in between hydrogen and oxygen. The question I'm going to ask you is, which direction are those electrons going to move? Are they going to move closer to the oxygen, closer to the hydrogen, or are they going to stay in the middle? So your options are closer to the oxygen, the electrons are going to be pulled closer to the hydrogen, or stay in the middle. Press pause, take two seconds, try to answer this one. The more electronegative element is oxygen. Okay, If I'm looking at a periodic table, and this is my periodic table here, I do want you to recall hydrogen is located on this side, and oxygen is located over here. And the electronegativity values increase as I go across my periodic table. So I have high electronegativity over here, and I'm going to have a lower, not the lowest, but a lower electronegativity value over there. So my ele electrons in a bond are going to drift towards the more electronegative element. In this case, it is oxygen. So my electrons are going to move towards oxygen in my chemical bond. In the last question, the electrons that are in question are these. These are the electrons between chlorine and between sodium. Are my electrons going to move towards sodium, towards chlorine, or are they going to stay in the middle? Press pause. Work on your answer. Okay, guys, I've made a little periodic table for us. In the meantime, I do want you to recognize that sodium is on the left side of the periodic table. Chlorine is on the right-hand side. My electronegativity values increase are going up. My electronegativity values increase going this way. So chlorine is definitely more electronegative. Therefore, my electrons are going to move closer to chlorine. So right now, I've seen three scenarios. I've seen this scenario over here where there is an equal share of electrons. Electrons stay in the middle. And I've also seen another scenario here where my electrons are going to move. 
my electrons are going to move closer to the more electronegative element, which is oxygen. And the last scenario I'm looking at here is chlorine is being the more electronegative element farther to the right-hand side. Therefore, my electrons in this bond will move towards chlorine. Let's sum it up. Electronegativity is how strongly an atom attracts electrons to itself in a bond. And I use the word pulls electrons to itself instead of attracting. It's kind of a tug of war going on. The winner of the tug of war is determined by the size of the atom. The smaller atoms are more electronegative. The larger atoms are less electronegative. So the smaller atoms will always pull electrons closer to itself in a chemical bond. That's all, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Later.